Big Virgil, tell them about it. How y'all doing? As you know, I'm the great grandmaster. We've got a lot of things going on in the next week or two. I watch Raw TV one on one. It's going to be a lot of exciting things coming up. Stay tuned to it. Make sure you get my book, My Life Over the Top. Yes, today is another special day. I got Big Unks, my, my god uncle, man, Phil Mo Slim's uh, an ace and bro. You know, and this is, uh, you know, as we know, the longest running uh, player in the game, you know, successful with many years and uh, was able to hold on to his women and, you know, his success and everything. So today we're going to get into a little bit about his short documentary and how it was growing up in, in SAC. So um, uh, tell him about how it was growing up in SAC when you was a youngster. <laughs> Actually. I was growing, growing up in Fresno, California. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't start out in Sacramento. All right. You know, I got uh, 77 years of uh, of history, and I got so many, so much, so far I can go back. But it's dug way down in the, in the archives, so I don't have, really have to dig. Yes, sir. But uh, if you want to go back to the from the beginning, I start out as a kid. Getting raised up by a good family, going to church every Sunday, which is something I didn't really adapt to. So uh, a friend of mine by the name of Urban, we've been knowing each other since we was kids. So as we got older, mothers would make us go to church, and we had a car like 14, 15 years old. He had one, I had one. So we would drive both cars to church, Park one, get in the other one, then we leave in the other one. The church was open. Oh, this is before the game for the streets yeah, this, and everything. This before all that. Yeah, yeah. we want to know all that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, your mom or your dad was in the church? Mother and father went to church. You know, they raised me in church. You know, and mine too. I just couldn't really, really get with the, the church thing as right. a youngster. You know, want yep. to go out and play, ride bicycles, and do all the things the kids do. You know. Yes, sir. So fun was my main priority. Right. You know, says time went on, you know, and I got to be uh, late on in the years when uh, I was in high school. I used to see this big player ride through by the name of Milton Peters. And uh, he'd come through in a brand new Cadillac. Him and another it was like it was like five players in the town. So instead of me doing my work in school, I'm looking out the window watching them ride through. So at this time, you know, we all come from the struggle. None of us that I know of come uh, from a, a rich background. You know, we all, like I said, I'm 77 years old, so I, I didn't see it all. All from poverty or the uh, projects yeah. or... Anything like that? Well, my friends stayed in projects, but I was fortunate enough I didn't live in the projects. We had a house. Matter of fact, two houses. Was it suburbs? Life. No, it was in the city. Okay. Yeah, in the city. Yeah. And uh, I watched Milton for a lot of years because he was really exciting. Right. Uh, like a movie star ride through. Every year, it was like five players in the town, but he would ride brand new every year for everybody. So, Probably one but two Cadillacs in town. The rest of them was old, but his was brand new. So I admired that. As I got to... Uh, how old was Milton? Uh, he's like way older than you. So how old would he be now? Milton was exactly about 18 years older than me. Yeah, I was a kid at the time. So he's 10 years older than Filmo. My godfather. I would assume that, yeah. Yeah, yeah I would assume that. But I, I went down to Chinatown one night with all the prostitutes. And uh, pimps was riding through. And me and my friend was on the other side of the street looking. We see this brand new convertible Cadillac he used through. And uh, he had the shirt and tie. You know, he wore suits back then with the diamond stick pins and uh, diamond rings, hair wave, you know. Yes, sir. And as he rode through, there's about 20 prostitutes on the corner, all of them looking as he rode through. And he come through there leaning, you know. Yes, sir. And I thought that was fascinating. Yeah. And uh, as he went down and parked his convertible Cadillac on the corner, uh, 
They said, now that's Milton Peters. He was the coldest uh, individual that I had ever seen, you know, dress wise, ride slick, looking slick, you know. Uh, everybody in town admired him. Yes, sir. So as time went on, you know, uh, me not knowing anything about the game, but I was just watching from afar. Uh, my mother and them had pressed me to go get, you know, jobs and stuff like that. Because, like I say, everything was real slow in the town. Yeah. And uh, so I went past the test. Uh, worked for about a couple months. So another test come up, and I passed that one. And uh, I got the other job, one for the city, one for the state. Yes, sir. So I said, okay, well, I'm cool from now on. Further thing from my mind is about the game. I like watching it, but I never uh, uh, anticipate being in the game. Right. And I went and bought me a, a Cadillac because I always like to dress and stuff of that nature. You know, I, I, I come from that since I was young. You know, it just hit me. You know, that's dress. that's another reason probably why the girls uh, seen something different in you because your your background and your uh, yeah. bringing and yeah, you know yeah, your mother whole, and father and all that. Yeah, the whole city because I, I lived a lot better than all my peers. You know, they projects, they robbed and steal. I had it. I didn't have to do any of that. Right. Right. So as time went on, about <clears throat> one month later, I got a letter in the mail. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> and it was saying that uh, I was terminated. Okay, I've got, got one job left. So the next week, another letter came to me and I was terminated from both of them. Right. And uh, at this time, I was trying to like, didn't know nothing about the game, but I'm just getting my, my uh, money a few dollars from women here and there, you know, enough to sustain and maybe get a, a a used car or something, you know. So uh, I'm riding down the street uh, that night thinking and pondering what I'm getting ready to do next. And some lights start flashing. It's a street called Fresno Street. That's one of the main streets in Fresno. So I pull over. Two ladies jumped out. And uh, they say, they say, uh, Virgil, can, can I ride with you? I say, yeah, I got someone to talk to you about. I say, okay, come on. So they was prostitutes. So as we ride down the street, one of the other ladies I never met before, she looked at me and said, I like him. He is fine. So the other girl say, all you got to do is get your money together and choose him. So before I can get to drop them off, the woman reached over and grabbed me some money. And she chose on the spot. So now I'm apprenticing in the gang because them was veteran prostitutes. You know, one I had went to school with and the other girl I didn't know. This was your first encounter? That was my first encounter. How old was you then? Probably around uh, 17. Yes, sir. Maybe. Getting ready to be 18 years old. Yes, sir. So as I go down Chinatown, I drop them off. And uh, when I dropped them off, the girl's pimp come down and just beat her up, mm. you know. So uh, she in turn, handling like a champ, and turn around and say, fuck him. You know, I'm being with Virgil. And so that was my first encounter with the first lesson I had in the game. So. As time went on, she paid, she paid. So now I'm getting more seasoned, more seasoned, because all the other players is uh is uh seeing I'm getting my feet wet and they, they liking my style, you know. So I'll go to the club one night. Well, actually, let me back up a minute. A few years went by and I got more seasoned. So I started flipping catalytes because I remembered what Milton was doing. So I'm kind of following that lead because I feel like that's what you're supposed to do. You know, had a flair along with the with the game, you know. So I went and got my first diamond ring. I got me a first stick pin with the, the, the letter V in it, my initial. And uh, I started representing what I thought was uh, the glamour, like trying to get some money here and there, you know. Uh, thing was, you know, $75, $80, $100 a day. So that wasn't too bad for working for 
two, three dollars an hour, you know. Yes, sir. Now, as uh, time went on, I got to be four, five, six deep. Yes, sir. Knock some out of L.A., you know, some get more season now. Yes, sir. I go to the club, and uh, one of the other biggest players in town, name was Billy Etheridge. He had a white girl to get on my line, and I moved her. So now I feel like I really ain't got my feet wet now. Yes, sir. I'm doing better than a lot of older guys was doing because I'm real. I done got real serious with this now. Yes, sir. I'm not playing with it no more. Now you're yeah. knocking off uh, yeah. veterans and all that, and you, yeah. you're a youngster. Yeah, I'm moving and grooving. I wonder. Yes, sir. I go to my mother's house, and I'm hiding from her because I still got the kid attitude because they raised me right, you know. So I'm thinking I'm hiding it from my mother. She said, what did I hear about you and that old black boy being the biggest pimps in town? I said, I'm thinking, how she know all this? So I don't respond to none of it. You know, I turn around and leave because, you know, I always have respect for my parents, you know. So she started hearing more and more from the streets. So uh, in 1966, uh, I bought another convertible Cadillac and already had another 61 Cadillac convertible. So I bought the 66 convertible Cadillac. 65, excuse me, not 66, 65. Yeah. I turned around in 1967 and I bought another new Eldorado. So now I got that one. I got the 65 and I got the new Eldorado. I'm turning 21. So uh, I'm not doing too bad. It looks like life is going to be all right. So 68, the police start sweating me real tough. They ride down on me every time they see a Cadillac. Because, you know, if you got a Cadillac and you're in the town of Fresno, no small as it was. You gonna get an interview from the police, so they stayed on my line because my name was ringing. I didn't know it was ringing like that. Yeah, you had been doing it for at that time for what, like ten or twenty years already, huh? No, it started around sixty three, but this wasn't nothing but like sixty seven now. Oh yeah, so a few years later, you yeah, were, you they, they sweat me. My name is ringing uh, big, and uh, yes, they sir. sweat me real tough. You they know? got on you. Yeah, so sixty eight, I'm about seven deep. And uh, I turned around and uh, was checking my traps on the fog, fog at night. It was 68, 69. I'm checking my traps on the fog at night. And I backed into a pole and bit my elder right up. And, and ended up uh, bending up so bad it couldn't fix it. And ended up told out, I ended up losing it. Damn. So now. I done gave my other car to my other partner and, and, and he went to Seattle, Washington and it, the convert, black 65 convertible. Yeah. Then I gave my other 61 to my brother. Now I'm carless. Uh, yeah, so things went real bad for me, you know. So police sweat me. So my father come to my house. He's police parked on each corner. Yeah. And uh, he tell me, say, it's about time for you to leave. You got to get away from here. Right. I, then I moved to L.A. Went to L.A. So uh, one of my partners, he stayed eight, nine deep. You know, we come up together. His name was Jasper. Yes, sir. He stayed seven, eight, nine deep, you know. So we was like brothers, you know. So I went down there, camped this house. I was so tired being on the road. So I'm laying there asleep. And this woman, he had one of them. It was two twins. One of her, his sisters, his woman's sister, come show me and put the money in my pocket while I was asleep. So when I wake up, I got a hole. Don't even know how I had. Got a call her, you know. She showed me while I was asleep. Yes, sir. So now I'm uh, trying to get back now. You know, I have no car, no money, no nothing. So I'm trying to get back. She turn around, go bad. She run off. Then I catch another. She go bad. She run off. Catch a nut, she go bad, she run off. They come, but they didn't stay. So uh, about a, a year later, I'm hitting and missing, you know. About a year later, I said, well, let me find another uh, stomping ground. So I in turn and go back to Fresno. When I go back to Fresno, I ain't got but a few hundred. I turn around and look at the town, see what was going on for about uh, 
30 days in about eight months, I'm back. This had to be in 1970, 1970. I get back. So 1971, I go by 70 El Dorado. You know, the choosing again and the thing is starting to pick up. 1972, I buy 72 El Dorado birth, straight off the showroom floor. So that took me off into from 1972, Ryan brand new, all the way into 2022. It's been all right ever since. Hit and miss a little ups and downs, you know. But uh, I still was able to stay rocking steady, doing better than uh, a lot of guys that was. Your peers. Yeah, or my or peers. Or yeah, or I still, older. yeah, I still was doing better than all of them. But, you know, Sky was always a slim with me. What they call a big bank was nothing to me because I was kind of accustomed to having big banks now, you know. Yes, sir. So I kind of outgrew all of my friends that I come up with. They used to get angry and mad at me because I wouldn't mess with them. But, I, you know, I had elevated myself to another level. Yes, sir. I still never play big on me a little old you with them. I still socialize with them. But they wanted me to be on the same page that they were on. And I outgrew all that. Yes, sir. So, uh, the 60s, 70s, I always had a lot of love for all my friends. Uh, I took a, a friend of mine was in Hawaii. I always had a good name in the game. My word was always solid because I, I come up that way. I was taught that way. Yes, sir. If you're not nothing, your word's not nothing. So a friend of mine had called from Hawaii and wanted me to meet him in L.A. He's a big, uh, he was not a big, a young, young guy that was having great big money that loved me. But he was, uh, he was a, a cocaine dealer. So he said he needed to talk to me really bad. He said, because I knew everybody, everybody respect me, I had connection. He was saying, reading between the lines, what he was saying. I said, let me get out of there and go talk to the guy. And a friend of mine come by and he said, uh, man, it's a drought in town. He said, I know you know everybody, everybody respect you. I know you know what to do. I told him, yeah, I know what to do. But that's not my lane. You know, I don't feel like going to do that. Then my friend from Hawaii called me. First, please come talk to me. You know, you know, it's one that I could really talk to, you know, that I could really relate. So he called. I say, well, this guy owed me about 10 grand. And I say, if he got my money, I'll come on down, which I had a bunch of money. I was stacked up then. Yes, sir. But I didn't have it close to me. You know, I could live in different cities and different things, you know. Because yes, sir. At this time, you know, uh, you wasn't using no banks and all that type of yeah, stuff. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I come from yeah. the street, so I, I couldn't do what a legal person would do, you know, so I had to spread it out different cities. Mm -hmm. L.A. with my sister. Different places. Yeah, so I didn't have, really have to do anything. You know, I started buying a lot of property and stuff. Sacramento, you know, and uh, and you became a, a realtor early then. Uh, yeah, right I was trying to make the right decision for the future, basically. Yes, sir. Uh, so you still into real estate now? Well, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm still will buy property, but this is the wrong time. So that's why I'm just holding back right now. Yeah, okay. what I buy, yeah. But I got to make the right decision on that. I already bought a hundred ten thousand dollar home back in 1981. Uh, I have. One lady, but she was hitting them so good. Town has slowed down in 81, but I'm still getting six, seven, eight thousand a day. And everybody else couldn't even break luck for fifty dollars. So they wanted what I was doing. I said, I'm doing the same thing y'all doing. So you got to be doing something. That was in Frisco or no, this is in Fresno before I left. Fresno. Yeah. They said you got to be doing something. I said, no, I'm not doing anything. They swore to God I was doing something else, but I'm shit. My one of my bras was a color race trait, you know. Yes, sir. I had two, two, maybe three bras. And then other than stay with the one that really stayed was the one that really hit them real good, you know. So 
Yes, sir. I got on the road, went to Canada at this particular time. So I'm just moving around because my money was flowing real good. Yes, sir. I bought a brand new uh, El Dorado, not El Dorado, Seville. And I bought a brand new home for 110000 This is in the 81, and that was real big then, you know, swimming pool, all that. So getting back to where I was at, my friend had uh, a, a call, and um, he said, man, oh, I got your money. So I said, well, I'm tired. I don't have no ride to go. So my partner say, well, I'll drive you. So now I said, well, you drive me to do got my money. I'll go down and rest in the car, sit and talk to him. We got on the road, went down there. I slept all the way because I'd been on the road for about a week. Yes, sir. So when we get down there, he don't never call. So I'm laying at the hotel sleep. About five or six o'clock that evening, he calls me. He said, first, meet me over here. I said, come on, let's go. I'm thinking we're going to sit and talk. But this was time we pull up down on Sense and he throws a bag in the car. Yes, sir. So I look down and it's, and it's a brick. And this is what my partner want. I say, here it is. I say, but you know, you got to drive right going down the highway. I'm going beyond what I usually do. Yes, sir. And uh, before I wouldn't even do get close to nothing like that. Right. So now we go down the highway. Yes, sir. We get through the grapevines, and uh, the police pulls him over. Yeah. So I'm still laying there asleep. He said, the red light is on us. I said, okay, what you do? He said, I wasn't doing nothing. <laughs> so I said, you had to be doing something. So the guy, the police come to my outside, said, this guy don't have no license. I didn't know he didn't have no license. Right. So he said, you got a license? Usually, the, the, uh, I get my license. Usually, they take a license driver and say, well, he can't drive no more. Get in the car and move. Right. At this particular time, he goes to the car and starts searching and finds the brick. Damn. So now, leaving the house, letting it come right back. And back then, y'all didn't have no compartments or nothing like no, that. No, none of that. Have. None of that. Yeah. So during this time, the guy take us to uh, the police take us to jail. They arrest us. So now I'm in jail on a million dollar bail. Damn. That was the first time you was really. Yeah, first time. First time I ever had any you know problem like that. Doing a friend of mine a favor. And so we had to lay there. So I'm with the court. And I paid a lawyer. I gave him about seventy-five thousand for both of us. And uh, I tell him, I said, I just want to bail out, you know. So try to get this bail. So the DA threatened it. If you if you get to if the judge lower the bail, I'm gonna file a conspiracy on a lot of other people. There, I said, okay, well that's what you got to do. So they dropped the bail to two hundred fifty thousand. I said, I'm bailing. She immediately filed conspiracy, excuse me, and raised the bill up to 750 more thousand. I got bills by my weight. So now I say, okay, well, I, I won't bail. I said. So we go to court. We beat all charges yeah. on an illegal search. But we had a dirty judge a dirty D8 and a dirty cop. They overruled all that. So the lawyers got upset. They say, you know, we can stop all proceedings and go to appeals court right now. Or either you can go to the penitentiary and appeal your whole case. I say, take me to penitentiary. I ain't up there today in jail. So I say, I'm going to appeal the whole case. So we went on laid down for about 14 more months. 12, 14 more months. Then a letter come through the mail. Oh, let me back up a minute. Then, well, yeah, the letter come through the mail. So we go down and say it, reverse on it. They reverse the whole case. Yes, sir. So I go to the uh, the counselor. 
I said, what happens if you have a, a pill on the case? Y'all get out of here. You're going back. You ain't got nothing going back. I didn't say nothing to him. I got it in my hand right there. I didn't never say nothing to him. I waited another 15, 20 days. Then I took it to him and he almost died. Oh, you got an appeal? So uh, it set up, went to court the next day or two. All charges was dropped. So uh, that's what happened on that. So getting out of jail, you know, I had spent about a hundred some thousand, you know. And so uh, I had a lot of work to do. Left a lot of things unattended. Left some money at my sister's house still, you know. Left some money at my, my parents' house, you know, had it buried up in there. So Yes, sir. I just laid back about maybe a month. Took my time looking it over again. So I just picked up about a couple thousand and went on back to, to Oakland because I was living in Oakland at this time. You know? Right. And I had lost so much money until I had to uh, really put my mash down, you know, which I, I still had more than most people, but I didn't have enough to satisfy me. And like I say, Sky was always living with me. I'm always looking for something bigger. So, in 19, I got out in 1990. So, in 1992, uh, I had built my money up so big. I bought, the, I bought a, a Mercedes, brand new Mercedes in uh, July. I bought a brand new Rolls Royce in August. I bought a I'd already had the Zimmer, Golden Spirit Zimmer. That was in what year? 80 what? This was in 1990. 90, and you still rolling Royals. Yeah, so, yeah. and then I turned around and bought the Carvette in uh, September. So I got all my stuff flying up. I got the four, five houses, everything plus furnished out. Got a big old house, and I live by myself, which, you know, and all my game all everywhere else, you know all up in the hills, looking down over cities and stuff of that nature. And my friend had brought this guy, and a guy come out of, uh, from out of state, Arkansas. I had another guy to come uh, uh, right in Sacramento. They know I was all in position with uh, money because I always thought a little different, a little bigger than the average one of my peers. Yes, sir. And I always thought if you don't know much, you can't do much, you know. So I, that's what I had learned during the process of, of uh, all my teachings. And they come to me and brought this Mexican. We sit down and talk. So let me think about it. They brought, had so many keys. And say, I know you know. I see, yeah, I know, but I don't want to be getting my feet wet in that lane, you know. But come still about five, six deep, send them down the highway, Anaheim, Bakersfield, you know, and uh, Van Nuys, you know, I just got them on automatic on the road, you know. Yes, sir. So we sit down and have a little meeting. He said, Well, this is what we can do. Mm -hmm. He said, you got your outlet, got your people. You line them up, and I'm going to bring them to you. I went and talked to a couple of folks, told them the idea of what it was. So they said, yeah, man, do that. Cause we we don't know what to find them. We, like, we want to eat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I said, okay, well, uh, let me see what I can do. So the guy come back, we sit down and have another meeting. So I got three or four people that's, that's really want to handle their business, you know. So what he did was say, this is what I'm going to do. Whenever I leave, I'm going to put one because we don't do no talking. He said, when I get halfway, I'm going to put two. When you get all the way there, I'm going to put three. 
So I knew the code to where they was at. So once the garage wasn't well, coming in the garage, they would line it up. My friends would be sitting there waiting. They would pull in the garage and saddle up. Some of them had, like I say, the big hide place in their cars. Yes, sir. They come in the garage and they put them in their cars and they'd leave. And that's how they got out. And about a week later, trucks start coming in with boxes full of money. I said, this is more fun than just waiting on my game to come home, you know? Yes, sir. Because you ain't got to do that. Ain't gotta, all you got to do is collect your money. That's it. So that's kind of how that went up until uh, I didn't touch nothing and do nothing. I just, when they got it, it's gone. Like a little investment. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's kind of how that went until up until 1992. A friend of mine that I trusted, I had to do him another favor. Like I said, I never touched nothing, never around nothing. But this particular time, I, he begged me. I said, okay, man, but I know it's, it's something close. I'll go get it and give it to you. Now, in the meanwhile, he's telling somebody how well I'm doing. But the guy he's telling is a snitch, and he don't know it. Mm. So he don't even know it to the day, don't even know who it, who it is and who it was. I know because I had the paperwork. Yes, sir. So when he get it, he leaves. In turn, that gets me knocked off because of what I did for him. But he's going right to the police. And, and that knocks me off. And now I'm caught up again. Damn. With no bail. And they still kind of mad at you about last time. For still sure. mad, yeah. Sliding up out of that. Still mad. So uh, I go ahead on. I say, well, you know, they don't need me trying to fight this here. You know, they, I'm talking to the attorney. They look and say, we got five to 30. Now, I done beat the other case. But now I got a federal case from five to 30. I said, what this mean? I ain't never heard of this. I know the first case in five years. You know, anybody can rock with that. He said, five to 30, you can get 30 years. I cussed him out so bad, tried to fire him and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and then turn around and uh, I said, well, look, I already knew I was going to take five years all the time. Yes, sir. So I'm just going through the system. So when it comes to it, I said, okay, well, I'm going to take the deal for five. Now, instead of giving five, they gave me 10. Yes, sir. Five for that case and five for having a gun. Damn. Run a bow leg. So, no, after about, uh, they, they sent me to Oklahoma, then they sent me to Texas. Federal? Federal. Now, then they took all my money once again. I'm allowing my, I'm over a million dollars in the hole. Took my cars, took my, I had a million dollars for jewelry, mink coats. Five, six houses fully furnished up. They walked in my house looking around and say, How is he living like this? Because they never could pin me down on anything because I wasn't doing anything, you know. Yes, sir. All I did was the brain. Yes, sir. But this guy, when told him all this here that uh, my friend had with him, and that's kind of how that happened. So, yeah, you never got involved. No, no, not me yeah. per se. Yep. But the thing about it, is that it was about four and a half years and a new law come in. And uh, I'm just hearing little stuff here and there. And I said that I don't want to hear that. Let me go and ride this on out. So I'm start walking, I hear it again. Then I hear it again. Whoever case was worse than mine had to beat that case. I said, okay, let me call down to the, to the uh, courts down there and find out what's going on. I called out and get the attorney. My attorney won't answer. He hang the phone up. Yes, sir. Now he done got all my money. Now he's acting crazy. Right. Acting funny. Yeah. So I called again. He hang the phone. I don't never get him. So let me call the federal defender. They said, well, we don't know. It's something new come out and we're not familiar with it. I know more about it than what they know. And these are federal defenders. 
So when he finally looked into it in that couple of days, he said, I advise you not to do that because you can mess yourself up and get more time. So I said, okay, I'll back out of it. I let my spirit be my conscience. About two weeks, I said, well, you know, they just got to give me more time. I'm going to rock with this. I called him back again. I said, well, I'm going to go ahead and I want you to file it. He said, well, I, I'd already told you. He said that uh, if you try and uh, do this, it could mess you up and get more time. I said, roll the dice. So about four days later, come back. They knocked five years off. It was illegal to run a bow legger like that, new law. So it's something that the, they weren't even aware of. And it's, they, they stuff, you know. Now I ain't got but five months left in, in the, to do my time. And I done all my time. I'm ready to go. So uh, four or five months went by. They gave me a plane ticket. $200. I flew into Sacramento. And my girls picked me up. They start putting jewelry in my ears. And then so I'm right back with a brand new car. And they took 20 cars from me. So I got a brand new car. Time on land. So it, 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 I never got a break in between as far as being flat broke. And so that took me all the way up into the day. So what I started doing, I said, I'm not making any no more mistakes and trying to help people or do none of this. I'm backing all the way out of this. No money is not worth it. So I got into movie production and book writing. And uh, how many movies you got out? I got about uh, three or four movies out. They're getting ready to do a movie on my life. That's what they're working on now. Uh, I got series that's coming out. Just a little stepping stones. You know, I've been on. Uh, goody. That's a friend of mine. Yeah, yeah I've been to a few shows with him, you know. And been dibbling dabbling and it's but the main thing I'm waiting up for is the the main movie they're trying to get to the theaters. So I've been rocking with that ever since. I got back out of all the illegal everything that was had any uh pertaining to anything illegal. So I've been doing that for the last I haven't even seen. They think that I, they think that I've been dealing drugs. I said, "Well, no, I ain't never dealt none." You know, I'm I'm responsible for having it out here because, uh, but I never dealt it myself. No different than you know them and their yeah. their scamming and their yeah. uh, you know, learning yeah, loans yeah. to get money. You know, yeah, so. yeah they do all yeah. type of things. You know, yeah. but uh, so don't, you know, like, like yeah. I said, if you don't know much, you can't do much. I always say the day you lay off, it might be time to pay off. You know, could hurt you or could help you. You know. And in and, and my sake, uh, not laying off, it, it hurt me. You know, and that's what got me charged all the millions and laid me down. But, you know, they just never, they always say slips don't count until you fall. I just never got a chance to fall all the way down. Right. So by me learning a lot of things in prison, prison helped me more than it can hurt me. I learned a lot. And uh, I put that, adapt that to what I knew already, which I was always ahead of all my peers already. So the more I learned, the better I became. And so when it's all said and done, I couldn't do the same thing that I was doing because I didn't want to take them type of chances again with my life. So I went back to the basics, dealing with women on another level. So now I'm then got real seasoned with it. I know what to do, how to do. My patience is better because I didn't have any patience at first. And so I adapted to real life. So now I sit back and let life take its own course. And uh, I'm still getting this and still getting that, still that, but it's all legal, you know. So, you know, they say game is not to be told to be sold, you know. So I can't say everything because you put it in the wrong ears. Uh, they're going to. Yeah, that's like yeah. telling your right hand with your left hand. Doing yeah, I mean, you know, it's yeah. not only that. Everybody's not ready for the same thing. Everybody don't think on the same level, you know. And if if you if you go into something and don't know what you're doing, you mess it up for everybody. Unless you're real 
uh, uh, game tight. I can spread some wisdom with you if you game tight, but most people are not. Just like if you got a square, you got four, five brawls in there, and you got a square coming at his hip. He going to think he's doing something hip, real slick, and he messing up you and everything else, what you're doing, you know, saying the wrong shit, don't know what to say. You know, the same thing when it comes to everything else, you know. That's why I don't. I can't give it up to no. You got to be qualified to get this. Yes, sir. You know. So uh, life is just getting better as it goes because, like I said, I learned how to have patience. And, and you don't take everything just because it looks good, sound good. You got to be a, have a show bet on what you do in life. And and I thank God for giving me the wisdom and the knowledge that he had gave me. It cost me, but everything costs. It costs to go to college. It costs to uh, uh, do everything in life. It's, it's a charge behind it. But the charge I got gave me knowledge enough to know how to stay on top and know how to win. So this is where I'm at. You being a ladies man uh, and, and have to do that time, how much time did you do f like in one stretch? Most I did was f five, five years at that time. And uh, you, we all know you a man and you are, you are, you got a gangster with you, but you, we know you a ladies man. That's your per expertise. So <laughs> being up in there and you a ladies man, I know you uncomfortable and you probably had to bump heads with all them suckers and squares, man. You know, how was that? you know, that five years, man, and what did you learn, and what, did you have to go through uh, some some physical altercations, go to the hole, you know, what was it like up in there? Well, I went to the hole from the county jail. Yeah, I was always a leader up in prison, because I was well respected everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, all through the system, I, was, sure. I had a lot of respect. Yep. And the, some of the baddest... Same <laughs> as now. Yeah, yeah, some of the baddest gangsters up in there got up under me, because of my wisdom and knowledge. I could help them with their women. I could help them, you know, they having problems from jail. They would call nobody but me, you know. And uh, they really respect me, you know. We had a lot of love for each other. Excuse me. A lot of gangbangers, they got up under me. And uh, they ain't just written. I never had any problem with one because I know I couldn't, uh, couldn't uh, let nobody play with me up there. And it's one guy that I thought was cool, try to play them, so I had to call him out, you know. All them bad gangsters standing there, man, they, they, they were scared to death because they know it was going bad for them, you know. That I carry myself like a man. When in as a man, I come out as a man. Everybody with that telling and this, and that, I ain't never told on nobody. I ain't never done nothing. I always stood up and been a man about whatever I've done, and everybody respect that about me, you know. Yes, sir. So when you called him out, uh, did he, did you did you have to whoop on him or? Well, it was he broke it down so quick. Mm -hmm. And so uh, begging and pleading that it, it did just didn't even go there because I I went I took it there you know yes sir you was yeah. in, you had that energy you couldn't yeah. measure up to it like to say one thing about it I didn't just come from being a player I come from something else before that you know and that's buried deep down in me and I don't even want to bring that out because I try to keep things in a smooth man, manly fashion yeah. smooth yeah that's why I try to carry my life you know I don't I I'm not running from nothing. But I'm not looking for nothing. That's some so, good advice to give yeah. all of us too. Yeah. So I'm not uh not going out just to, I try to keep the peace, you know. And that's how I like living. Uh people be uh having a lot of hate and all that, but they say they really got hate for themselves because they can't keep up with the pace what the next person is doing. But if they get up under that person, they might find out that person might be the best friend they could have in their life. Yep. You know, but they don't give it a chance, you know, because they like uh, fighting with themselves, you know. Right. So that's kind of where it's, where it's been with me. What about us, your siblings? How many siblings do you have? Y'all, y'all, are y'all close? I mean, like family. You got a large family structure, cousins, siblings, stuff like that. Yeah, I got about uh, four sisters left and one brother. That's what's up. So we all pretty close, you know. They older or younger? I'm the oldest one. I'm the oldest. You the big bro. Yeah, I'm the oldest in my whole family. Other than I got a sister that's 90. No, that's 89. And but I'm the oldest boy. She's the oldest girl that's left out of the whole family. How was y'all structure? How did mom and dad uh, teach y'all and treat you guys? Being was y'all guys five deep siblings? No, I, my sister died. My oldest brother died. Oh, sorry to hear that. Yeah, so they died when I was in prison. Mm. 
but but as as children though, um, were you guys close? Uh, like mom and dad was there for you, like oh yeah, holidays yeah, yeah. and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. My mother and father was good. They, you know, I used I'm like anybody else used to think stupid as a kid, think that my parents couldn't go broke, had all the money in the world, you know. So I used to get a little aim when I asked for something they didn't have it. But when you grow up and look back, you really understand uh, that life is more harder than what you think. So I embraced them for taking care of all them kids that in my family, and they raised us all. They they broke up. Even they, other they, other other uh, family members, they they helped yeah, out. All my friends, it's two of my friends that had a mother and a father. The rest of them just had a mother. I had a mother and a father, so I was raised good and I was raised right. They did the best they could. So when I used to ride to LA, I come through and give them two three thousand a piece. Every time I go from Oakland to LA, and sometimes I went two or three times a, a, a month, I'd give them that money based appreciating how they raised me. I was giving something back, you know. And that's what I'd be saying, man. That's that's uh, a lot about like uh, how you you communicate with women. If you had a mom, and if your yeah. mom not only you know because it's. It can, it can mess you up if you only have your mom. Mm -hmm. So you need that balance, the mom and the dad, because they're putting in yeah. valuable information and skills so you could grow up to be a well-rounded man. If you don't have that, then you go, you're on your own. You know, this is where a lot of people get mis it with me. I always kept my circle small, so people didn't really get a chance to really know me. But the people that know me love me. They know my heart is good. I don't misuse, abuse no one, you know, and uh, I don't take from no one, you know. If anything, I'm going to share with someone. I've always been that way, but they don't know me like that just from how I've been carrying it all these years, stand on top of my game for 60 years straight, riding brand new, living good. They don't know how to take me, but I'm the best friend a person could ever have if you know how to treat it. But if you don't know how to treat it, I don't need to be close to you in no way because you got to be able to see it to achieve it, you know. When I get around a person, I know what they're made of. And I feel like they should do the same with me. So they make a lot of mistakes with me, just looking from the outside. You know, people never got in my business because they never knew my business. Big game is played smooth out of sight. So when I say big game plays smooth out of sight, it's not a word, it's not there for everybody. You got to be in the in crowd to really know. How how did how did your parents feel about you getting in the game? They didn't like it, period, at all. You guys they were like, church people. So yeah. that's why I kept it away from them. You know, I never talk about it with them. My mother and father disagreed with everything. They say you weren't raised like that, which I wasn't. Mm -hmm. But they say it's you born in you. I don't know if it's born in me or not, but I know something was born in me that wasn't in them. Right. Yep. And uh, how I come that way, I, I can't even explain it, you know. But I, I became, I'm the one that put Fresno on the map and I didn't do it for the glamour. I didn't do it for no other reason than trying to survive. Yeah. My survive went to thriving. You know, uh, I never intended on being involved in no drugs and this and that, but they made me a kingpin. They made me bigger than life. Yeah, you get appointed. You know, yeah. I'm, 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 I totally agree with you, big yeah. unks. You get appointed. Other the people yeah. let the people yeah. crown. Yeah, that's what happened. They made, I mean, my name rang in Fresno from the '60s to right now. If you go down to Fresno, call my name right now. They'll lay the, lay the red carpet out because that's what kind of impact I put on the city with the police and everybody. You know, see everybody know me there. You know, everybody because back during that time, you know, like I say, it wasn't a. If you was a player back in that, you was like president of the United States. People had any nothing. Yep. I mean, they didn't hardly help, but they had to go steal bicycles to ride. You can't even go buy them. Yeah, but, but it, it it is like the president. It's, it's like uh, cause cause us being African yeah, uh, colored, yeah, yeah. we automatically politicians, we right. political, right. because all the politics started because of us right. and behind us. So you get you go to Africa or something like that. It's the same way. It's just call different it's like when a lot of people believe in you yeah. and know that you're going to upgrade or elevate them mm -hmm. or the city they will get behind you like that yeah it's no different my name reigns so big i got blamed for everything 
everything. When they busted me in 1992, my name was so big, all the DAs, all the lawyers was in court, filled up every seat trying to see who I was. They heard the name, but they didn't know me. They, uh, the movie people come out, the book people come out. They want to do a movie. They want to uh, do a book on my life, but I'm fighting the case. I can't allow that. I don't know. This is the first time I ever had a federal case. I don't know what they're trying to do. Yeah, because you knew you knew all those uh, people who acted in those movies that they were project projecting to be the ism and yeah. the fast life, like the Mac and right. all oh, that. Frank Walter, I knew them all. Everybody was in the Mac, I knew. And the people yeah. who, who were shooting it up. Yeah, see, I, I would have been, uh, other than the, the few movies out, all the documentaries, I don't, all the people, I'd have been the first one to have one out because uh, they came. They, they was there to film me up in jail and everything, but I, I, I refused it. Right. Too much pressure, too much... Uh, well, there's something that I wasn't aware of. See, when I was coming up, it was hard to even take pictures and show them to people. You're scared because you don't know what the the law is about, you know, uh, doing movies and stuff like that. We we hear from that. And that's the reason why I, I quiet my name down. It was so big, you know, because I'm, I was afraid. You know, and I won the first players ball in 1972. And Fresno, I'm the one to one. I'm scared to death. I wouldn't even go up in there. I hit on the outside, just knew the feds was coming from them things, unknown, you know. I waited for about the last 20 minutes. And I even give another guy my car to ride so I can see if they jack him, then they're going to leave me alone. And uh, I'm hiding behind a tree. And I said, well, ain't nothing happened all this time. Last 20 minutes, I went, the cameras hit me from everywhere. Had it all in the magazine, you know, one of the players' balls. So. And you go yeah. way back with Bishop, huh? Bishop Don Juan. Bishop Don Juan's a good friend of mine. You know, we, we got a lot of love for each other. Okay. Bishop Don Juan, Mensa Simo, you know. How long um, you guys go back? How many years? Oh, we, you know, we go in and out. We don't go back that many years because uh, we didn't. Wasn't really close like that until the last, I would say the last uh, 10, 11 years. What can you tell me about like the uh, royalty in the church, the difference or whatever? Well, you know, everything is a title, you know. Uh, that's one reason why I never let people uh, call me pimp, just call me by my name, you know. You know, I started out, I was, I was pimping. Yeah, sure enough, all my life I had holes, you know, but. I kept it kind of respectful and and sequent because I didn't want my name out there like that, you know. I just wanted the money. I wanted yeah. to live, you know. Yeah. I wasn't with the high side and trying to show a lot of people this and that. I did what I like doing. I got all that stuff for me. Yes. Sir. Not for everybody else. I got what I like. So I know all that was just a title, you know. You know, I, I grew up into being a Mac, you know. You know, being a Mac, that means you you're the top pimp, you know. I, I knew what to do. My catch hand was velvet. My game was velvet. My money was velvet. Everything about me was velvet. Yeah, I wouldn't agree. I wouldn't agree with my big unks, man. You know, because uh, the Mac is the top. I mean, it's, it's some people, but you hear a lot of youngsters saying that they believe the Pimp is the, is the top, but they haven't grown into who you are and exactly. who you became. Yeah. We don't even know if they're going to be the same person they are now because they're just getting into like their success or whatever. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is that, uh, See, with the ism, when you straight pimping, then you only got one woman to deal with. If the female says, well, you got numerous, but if she says she doesn't want to do something, she can only do hoeing. She, that's it. But the macking, you know, women can do she, whatever you want as long as you come back and you make me happy. You know, I don't care what you're doing to do it. You can get a job. You could get a company, whatever it is. You know, it's OK. But when you limit it, you know, then you limit it yourself to you know less women you know because me being you know like a professional and a podcaster and all mm -hmm. that uh, if I limit myself then I wouldn't have access I've already done it before so I know mm -hmm. just like what you're saying like mm -hmm. I came to uh, women and and they know that was my mentality when I was a kid mm -hmm. and they wouldn't even work with me you know not that they didn't like me or something they just 
didn't didn't want to do it and they didn't want to work with the ism like that. But once you start macking now, you know, girl, she 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 got she got to worry about her family looking at this, uh, the public looking at this. So, yeah. you know, you got a wide range of, of 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 information to deal with when you're you know not limiting yourself. So, I want to agree with you on that. Well, you know, a lot of times, you know, most people follow the trend. Mm -hmm. You know, so many call, but only a few are chosen. You know, so many sheep, but only a few shepherds, you know. And I was always a leader, you know. You just can't tell me no anything. Make me understand. I do what worked for me, you know. I play to win. I don't play to just to show out and show everybody. I play to win. And that's right. been working for me, you know. A lot of people limit themselves on this and that. A lot of guys say this and that, but they're not doing this and that. I don't pay attention to that, you know. I'll pay attention to where it's going to add up to be. You know, sky's the limit with me. If I if I didn't think big, I wouldn't even be where I'm at today. Because yeah. I'd have gave up on the first shot when it when it took all my money. I looked up at Sky saying, I don't know what I'm tripping on this for. Sky's the limit. And I reached right back, you know. Got back on. Yeah. I ain't never leaked no more than four or five months at a time. So said some guy leaked for years, you know. Uh, I, I, I've i been from four deep to 19 deep. Bless. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it ain't the heads that you count. It's the money that you count. Yep. You know, I never just, every, every one I ever had. I had one bro that was gorgeous. I mean, everything and couldn't get a dime. Right. And uh, when I'm getting three thousand out of one, she didn't give a six hundred. You know, and I did not understand. That, she was gorgeous. That's going back to what you were saying earlier too about like uh, squares and suckers. Yeah. You know, putting same shit and doing stuff. So you know, they uh, say this stuff to these to these women. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, she's bad, or she's you know she's this is a bad beat, you know, and you'd be like, man, hold on, man. You know, she's pretty, but she ain't even did. She ain't gave you nothing. She ain't helped you. You don't mm -hmm. know uh, how she feel about you. You know, mm -hmm. like how can she be bad to you already just because she's uh, physically attractive? Yeah. They be thinking with their little head, you know. Yeah, that's a lot of them be doing that. You know, I stayed true to the game. I stood by the strip, you know. I didn't go in with the little head first. I always went with the big head, you know, where the brain starts, you know. And uh, I, I went in like I was taught, you know, because I, I come out of, out of some super vets, you know. Uh, they had Charlie Montgomery, Charles V. Ann, uh, Milton Peters, Fuchs. I seen a lot of dudes do a lot of things coming up, you know, major players, but a lot of them was, was freaks, you know. They would buy this from the bros buy that from them, you know, go lay down with them and pay. I seen all of that. I just wouldn't cut like that, you know. And uh, I didn't let a bro uh, pick and choose me. I pick and choose who I want on my team. Because everybody didn't qualify. I didn't have bros give me money. I wouldn't even take it. You know. Come with too many problems and headaches. I wouldn't even take it, you know. And I didn't have to come try to make deals with me and then we go halfway. No, I didn't. it's all or nothing with me. You know, and, and I just was always serious about my plan, you know. And, and it worked. So after you got out, you did five years. So you got out with 97 or 98? I got out in 96. 96. Because I did, you get halfway, you get something off of halfway house. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I count the whole five years because the halfway house, all that is five years, any way you look at it. So I, I hit the ground running. Uh, you have to get a job. When you were working for the feds, at the mandatory, they're going to send you back. So I had five bras with money com coming all through the mail. You know, I ended up with eight total. We some amount ended up with five. So the money's coming through the mail every day. And uh, I stepped getting my dose. So I went out and got this, this job at the hotel, which it really wasn't a job. I paid my own salary through the halfway house. And uh, I paid, my, filed my taxes with the fake job that I had out there because I gave the man the money and he put the tax up and I, I, I was, I, I just had a spot out there. So it was a hotel. So I had my, my bras working out of the hotel out there and I just kept stacking my money, but nobody could see it. You know, did you have to stay on paper for a while after that? I did three years of paper. 
And so, they swept me all three years. So 99, you you got off paper? Yeah, I was uh I bought a, a beauty supply. When they was trying to sweat me to go to McDonald's and work, I said, I'm not doing that because my feet, my mindset was still about the game at this time. So uh I went and uh bought a whole beauty supply in a beauty shop, clothing shop, only one, and put in a corporation. I worked for the corporation. So my business, but it was legal. File tax and everything on it, you know. So where'd you go back to? Like what city? This is Sacramento. Sac. Yeah. So I went from Fred and I became the biggest in Fred's. No, I came one of the biggest in Oakland. And I came one of the biggest in Sacramento. Yeah. And then uh over the years of uh 60 years, then you became uh one known for being the best dressed, the best uh well, you know, the longest one who 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 was able to hold. 60 woman. years straight, yeah, 60 yeah. years straight. I stayed on top 60 years straight. All the lumps and bumps, merry-go-rounds, all the losses. I didn't have more losses than the average person will ever have, you know. And still stayed with it. Still stayed, got houses built from prison. You know, uh, it's it just, yeah, I owe it to God. And yet I don't owe it to me, you know. But, but all the things that I went through in life, you know, I owe it to him, you know. Because it's been an up and down thing, but it's just, like I said, it's, it's never lasted long enough for anybody to even see, you know. Because I, I stay confident with my art. I'm staying down for my crown. I'm definitely taking uh, notes out your book and, yeah. and honored to have you and uh, be around you and, and laced up by you, you know, because, yeah. uh, you know, it's, we ain't got many like you uh, who can really uh, tell us, you know, how to secure, you know, these uh shall we say situationships you know between us and these women out here because these women these days is like mean and hateful compared to back when you was in the game uh how you deal with that you know the different mentality and the heart that they have now yeah, it's hard man these these women now you know like to use that old clue say cookies they come leave that's honest to god truth because see one thing about a woman she had things on her mind that you would never even Think about or consider her plot is going on all the time and you never know it. You ever heard the, heard the saying that your job is 24 hours? That's the honest kind of truth. I had a uh, lady one time that she thinks so hard unnecessarily that when I turn over in bed at 3 o'clock in the morning, if she think I'm up, she go to talking. Things been on her mind all night. So that's the thing where it's say 24 hours a day that you got to stay on your business when it comes to a woman. Because they think completely different from a man. And it's always going to be, most of the time, negative. You know, because they think all the time, wonder what he's doing. What do he go to the bathroom from? Why he take that phone? What time he, why is he? It's always something. And it don't have to be nothing. They build up, create things in their mind. So that makes your job triple hard. Because you got to figure out what's on her mind. You got to figure out what she's saying and what she's not saying. So there's no telling what it is. And then she's going to lie half the time because she don't want you to know. Are you afraid to tell you? So it's going to keep a bunch of confusion. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's the that's the tough, tough part, because uh, me being, um, you know, I got in the, in the game around 98, 99. And then um, I became prominent around 96. Me and Dal Jones, you mm -hmm. know, the other youngster right. who was like my little brother, you know. But uh, so, you know, but we we seen it, too. So we we was all up under y'all. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we just seen the shift, you know, with, where um, people stop respecting mm -hmm. the game, you know, and. They felt like they already had it where they don't. So 20 years went by now, you know, and none of them uh, succeeded like you or me or even my boy Dale, mm -hmm. you know, because he's still doing his thing, you know, but I switched it up, right. you know, whatever. But, you know, we all successful is what I'm saying. But mm -hmm. if you look back, it's not many successful men or, or women, especially the renegades right. who went crazy. And they didn't stop wanting to listen and all that. Now look what happened. Now we all 40, you know, yeah. and most of them are drug addicts or yeah. they don't look, you know, young. Yeah. They look every bit of 60. So it's like, man, compared to now and then mm -hmm. when 
like you said, uh, going back to what you were saying when you were asleep, and she put the money in your pocket to choose yeah, you. Yeah. So it's like it's like that shit is unheard of now to me. You know, a lot of things unheard of because a lot of people guess and speculate on my movement. You can never guess my movement because I come from here, mm -hmm. and you can't see what's up in there because life come in different levels. A shark could go eight feet in fish tank, but fifty. 50, uh, 80 feet in the ocean. Mm -hmm. So if your mindset is still in that fish tank, you can't possibly know what's going on in that ocean. A lot of people think that I've been a drug dealer all my life. Just speculating and guessing. I ain't got that many years messing around at all. I ain't never dealt with none. Like I say, I was the brain. Yeah, I can put it there because everybody respect me. But they always going to speculate and guess on me. But when you first started, you know, you was it was all, you know, it wasn't I, like that. No, it wasn't like that. Yeah. And uh, so. I used to laugh at things because I knew they could never pin me down. And they couldn't even imagine the kind of money that I was getting just off problems. That's why they're even saying that because yeah. many and, of them, they're not even up to your I'm going to tell you something. It's a guy that got on my Facebook the other day, swearing to God, I was drugged. I said, man, you dry snitching. On TV, I yeah. mean, on the thing in front of everybody, letting people see who you right. really are. Man, I ain't seen no drugs in thirty some years. I remember that. I ain't saw none. Yeah, but they think this is impossible for women to do what they do. But everything I got, not want to say this here, come from women. Right. I didn't want to say nothing. I didn't, I told you a long time, big game place move out of sight. I didn't want to. Exposed, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They dope. took most of the do the dope money, you know, yeah. when you had to pay for yeah, shit. Yeah, and... yeah, they took all that, but I ain't yeah. saw no drugs, and it's just that it's still out. I'm gonna just say this: it's still out here. You just got to know what to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna give you game what to do because you're not close enough to me. But you might think the way I'm all everything I got come from women, you know, mm -hmm. everything. And they think it's impossible. Can't nobody buy no, you know, women, no woman buy a road. Oh, yes, they can. Because all mine come from. So uh, you've got to find out your own uh, blame, you know, because I'm staying in mine and I'm winning with it. Yeah. I know what to do. I'm a professional. Right. Yeah. And you show you showed that man because you didn't get out your character or nothing because he got on your page. And right. Started hating, and yeah, I laughed at him. I was having fun with him. I said, Let me just have a little fun with him, you know, let him and, and reverse game on him. You know, I had a little fun with him because, yeah, because he ain't even. It's like when I looked at his pay pictures, you yeah. know, he was like my age, so it's like, How would you know yeah. about this man's history like yeah. that? You you wasn't there, you, you ain't even old enough. You better come get some game, sit down, yeah. get up under him, and ask some questions, you know. But you know, like they used to the old cliche. Well, if you get a pimping case, that means you got you 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 went to jail for not pimping, not for pimping. It's the same thing with if you got arrested for drugs. I mean, I wasn't a drug dealer. I went to jail for it. So if I'd have been a real one, I wouldn't have went. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be having fun with him. You know, yeah. the whole thing is about winning. You know, that's what it's all about. Hey, man, you, you know the history, man. Uh, it's a lot of... Uh, Guys who say they straight laced, but everybody took a turn. Oh, yeah. yeah cut yeah, it out. Yeah, yeah, just cut it out. It just, and I'm not ashamed to say what, what happened, you know. But exactly. I, what, all I can say is I didn't deal none. But right. I supplied, yeah. Yeah, I supplied because I know the people. And they, and they and, and could do it now if I want to. I just choose not to. Right. Yeah, it's not it's not there. It's easy because all you got to do is think. Yeah, it's just like running mm -hmm. a business. That's all it is. We got about 15, 20 minutes left. Um, so tell the people about like the pool halls, the gambling houses, and the whole strolls back then. Well, the pool back halls in the back in the starting Fred that was down Chinatown. The trick houses was down Chinatown. Uh everybody hung around. You're going to life of the of the highlight is down Chinatown. And uh the gambling. You know, it's all in one spot. You know, my father used to go around there and gamble every weekend. Every weekend, he worked during the weekend. Every weekend, he'd out and gamble. Didn't see him all weekend. And uh, that went on for years and years and years. You know, I, I would like to say, I kind of patterned my style from one of the, the guys that I looked up to, like Milton Peters, you know. So I didn't hang around much. I didn't let people in my business much. Milton Peters was a hell of a player. 
Frank and Ted Ward was hell of a player. Where did they all come from? Like, where were they born? Arkansas, Louisiana. Oh, so, yeah, that's yeah. the first we heard about a yeah. sharp pimp coming up out that Ar Arkansas. Yeah, you yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. It ain't unheard of, man. You know? and, and see, when people say this and say that, you know, people run with it. Yeah. You know, I listen to a lot of players when they say this and that. I know where they be at in the game, from how they open their mouth. You yep. open their mouth, you're going to tell on yourself. Yeah. Because I know the game. I come mm -hmm. up with some of the best. Yeah. You know, and uh, they respected me as a youngster, a player. And a Mac. That's how they respect me. Frank and Ted was my personal friends. I used to then they'd come to town and I Fred Frank wouldn't even let me drive his car. He'd take my keys. I had a brand new Ella Rock. And I drive this Capilea around the town, you know, and we rode together, me and Ted rode together, you know, here and there. He used to come to the house, you know. Uh, and when I come into Oakland in 1983. All my team had left. Everybody had ran off. I had ran into this young, fine brother, one I take couldn't get no money. Mm -hmm. I had ran into her a week prior to that, not knowing my game. Everybody gave me, they left me leaking, standing at the hotel. I rode on, come back. I ain't got nobody, no clothes, no nothing. Right. I said, let me ride on down to Oakland, Holly Baby. And she said, come on. So I just took a ride. Got a brand new Seville, you know. I go down there and I said, it's going to be my first turnout here. She, uh -uh, I'm not doing that. Straight square. Took me about 30 days, take my time with her. And I flipped the wheel in Salinas and then end up in back in Fresno. Uh, but before I left, I had met all these youngsters. Didn't know anything about me because I quieted my name down. Now they got the other ones coming up. You got Gangsta Brown, Kenny Red, International Blue, Dino. Uh, what, they got a lot what of. What about uh, International Red? He's a lot younger than you, too. Yeah, International Red. All of them, I met everybody at the same time. Rosebud? All of them, you know. Mm -hmm. I know Rosebud's uh, cousin. Anyway, when I leave and go back to Fresno, Stop in Salinas, turn around, go back to Fresno. Man, do you know within 10 days, I'm 11 deep again? That quick from the time I left in. But like I say, you know, I wasn't into just showing nobody what my qualification, what I do. I was interested in me and getting my money. You know, it's a money game. You know, you got a lot of guys pimp for other guys. I pimp for me and that bitch. You know, that's why I pimp from. What, you know, what, what you see me do outside, that's what I do inside when ain't nobody me and her. Ain't none of that faking with it. It's all 100. Yeah. Why you think uh, the the gang turned into such a, a terrible and horrible thing? Like, uh, uh, they just out to get um, people like us now. I mean, even our sisters who like us and are attracted to us, they just, they want it. They, they want to even be, you know, the, the ism in the game, but they would, they want to prosecute us or something. What, what's, what's up with that? Who want to prosecute? Like the younger women, the younger, like hoes of the game in today's age. Well, you got to remember one thing. You start letting hip squares and get to the game, man. And start making deals with all these bros and turn the game around. And it's just spread like a disease. That's all they're going to know. It's bad. When I was coming up. You're right. When I was coming up, a woman automatically understand and knew what you was. Get back right there. She stepped to you. You know, you got a potential hope. Now, you come in and jury it all up, Brian, the brand new this and brand new that. And she don't know whether you're a player or a trick. Something's wrong with that. Back then, they recognized all that. Uh-oh, he's a pimp. I'm gone. Well, if you want to sit and listen, then you got your next uh, uh, bro. You right about that because mm -hmm. it's like a, you could go to like, when you go to the strip club, those women up in there are like squares, you know? Yeah. They're not really trying to get rich off the game or have no real game, but they think they got the game and they try to come and soak up the game, but they're not pay you or give you respect for it. You know, like you see a, a, a chick up in there hating on you, but using your shit, mm -hmm. trying yeah. to 
copy you and emulate you. Yeah, you know, uh, how can you not know the difference between a player coming? Yeah, back? how can you even think? Oh, I got me one. Now he's a trick. Yeah, you gang goofy if you can't. Now, you know they, they, you know, you know what they, they come from nothing. I take a zero, and make hero, take a tramp and make tramp, and take a tramp and make a champ. Yeah, you know, I got to groom them all the way. Yes, sir. You know, so that's kind of how it's been with me because a lot of women don't qualify to be with this ism man. They got it too messed up nowadays. You know. Yep. It's too messed up. It's way too and messed the up. Thing logic that you tell them, it's like talking to. Uh, Child dinosaur. Yep. They're not gonna stand none of that. Like you're not even speaking English. It's real crazy right now. You know how things go. Yeah, that's 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 exactly how I feel about it too. It's like uh uh you could um be the best you can be, the best man, best mm -hmm. person you can be to her, and she'll sit up there, give you an interview and and all that, but when it's time to really, you know get busy or show you that she care about you. She ain't going to do it. But then when you cut her off, she's still like trying to copy you or act like you or all of that game. All of that. She act, take what a man said and use it. With, wait a minute. You're a woman. Won't you act like a woman? How you act like a man? They got man ways, all that. Yep. And and that's that's like me uh, being a podcaster now where I, I describe to my a lot of my women and you, you said the right thing because you older and they could respect you because I was saying this to them. They get mad. You know, even when I tell them, look, your power is you being feminine. You know, and this is what lady, you yeah. know, men of the night can teach you who yeah. dealt with women is that, you know, these suckers, they let y'all run over them to keep. You might have some good coat or some good sex. So they're going to keep you. So they let you talk crazy to them. They let you disrespect them. And then so when you come across a, a real man who's it's not, you know, we don't have to say, oh, I'm masculine or I'm alpha. I sure, already know. Yeah, yeah, I already know that. So why are you saying? So, you know, like you're a woman. Mm -hmm. Be feminine. That's your power. That's how you're going to get any man. You know what's wrong with them? It's the mental capacity. They call mo man. Mm -hmm. Part man, part woman. Yep. And uh, they have no attributes about themselves. You know, they, they, they don't even care. They don't even look at themselves like that. Like I say, they they off in the sheep category. They don't think, right? You know, men like a, a woman. Yeah, I tell. I didn't have to tell, bro. If I wanted a man, I'd I'd have been a punk. Yeah, yeah. I like a woman. Me they too. don't even understand that when you say that. They don't. They want you to like them to being all tough and hard yeah. and and like you know you're gonna fight or man, come on, man. You got a man right here. I just don't assort that behavior. Right. I'm very dominant. You know, just because I'm not yelling and screaming. Mm -hmm. Don't mean, yeah, you're you're never could be more dominant. It's like uh, you got Queen Latifah, who's big and mm -hmm. masculine and mm -hmm. she likes to fight or whatever. She could never be even more dominant than P.B. Herman because she's born a woman. He's born a man. Mm -hmm. He's feminine. She's masculine. But it's they both projecting and acting. You know, they're both acting out a part where it really ain't them. A man should be strong and solid mm -hmm. and a woman should be feminine and and essential. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They they got they got things in them they don't even realize it's, it's part man. It's the man coming out. That's what they call the woe man. You know, the woe and then the man. It's a combination of both of them, you know. Which part is gonna dominate the other? Yeah. And you got beautiful women that have all the qualities of being a queen. Yeah. But they want to be a man some reason they yeah they want to be a king and and they, they never could do that yeah. instead of being a queen yeah. and you could probably rule yeah. and win yeah. you want to identify as me or you because right. they look up to us so they like i'm a man or i'm, I'm gonna put this on like t raw or i'm gonna put the, the glasses on like big virgil mm -hmm. instead of being a woman yeah. and you look crazy you look like you know and then when we don't deal with you then you start a war yeah, the woman is the, the, the ruler, the maker. She is. Of the universe. And the teacher. But a man is a born king. And a leader. And you're supposed to, yeah, you're supposed to uh, submit to your king. Yep. And ride with him, you know. You do. But you got so many different kind of guys that's supposed to be men that fall to the uh, women and pillow talk. Yeah. And all the talk about men and women. 
I've never done that. I've never talked bad about a man to a woman. Right. Oh, dude, this woman got so mad at me the other day because she asked me a question about a man. I said, I don't do that. Yeah, I don't. She big and got mad, fell out with me. I said, that's not my get down. I don't yep. do that. I'm not going to talk bad about another man to a woman. Exactly. That's how it be with me. Um, yeah. I just be sitting there yeah. while they... That why they talk about dudes and I bet look man all right let's talk about us now and they get like you said they yeah. get mad when you don't like bash the dude or yeah. and he could be doing about you about you but we're not gonna do right, it right right I don't have people say things about shit. me guys say things about me I won't even still won't say nothing no nope. if I'm gonna say something I'm gonna tell them yep you know, I'm not me gonna try and blast you I'm, not, I'm gonna tell you but you know and if I find out that you're doing that, like mm -hmm. pillow talking, or you're always hating on people successful who who's got good hearts, like you're trying to yeah. bash them down or get on them, then I'm gonna put you in the category of a hater and a sucker. Yeah. Even if you having hoes and you having money, yeah. I will stop like being your friend. Like I don't wish death on you mm -hmm. or bad, or I don't want a war, but we not the same. Because yeah. I come from the old school where. This is forbidding stuff. Mm -hmm. It's forbidden to do this. You're not a yeah. player or a P yeah. if you keep another man's name in your mouth and you're getting so jealous about this man. Man, stop worried about this man yeah. like you gay and start worrying about and see you tell them that they're gonna want to fight. Right. But that's how they acting is like right. gay, right. like what uh, you're doing this, you're doing this, or um, you know, just all up in your business, you know, like. Come on, man, get a life. You know, I have people that I know may have something against another man, either myself. But you can't make me not give that man credit and he's don't even be there. I'm going to speak up for him because if he did it, he did it. I don't care what it is now. If he did it, then give him his rights. Yeah. Don't try to take it away because it ain't like that now or whatever. But whatever he did, you can't take that away from him. You have to give respect where yeah. it's due. Just like I've been getting down, I got a six year run of stand on top. Get that man his credit. Don't try to take it away and make excuses up for this thing. Oh, well, he had this, he had that. Yeah. Well, what did you have? Yeah. That you ain't telling. Yeah. And, and we don't hear you saying that. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not racist, but yeah. we don't hear you saying that about the Caucasian man who's yeah. been up his whole life, or yeah. like Bill Gates. They talk highly of him. You yeah. don't hear our own men talking mm -hmm. crazy about Bill Gates. They talk highly of him. Mm -hmm. He's not pimping. He's not. So he got stuff mixed up. Yeah. Why yeah. Are you giving him credit, but you can't give your own credit? Yeah. You got to hate on your. Anytime we as a people see. Even a woman or a man these days, mm -hmm. not in your era, because y'all was coming out to civil rights. But after y'all era, mm -hmm. you know, now if there's a, a black man or a black woman doing good, mm -hmm. other black men and other black women, not all of them, but you got those slaves. They don't know they slaves. Mm -hmm. They doing the Willie Lynch, the Jim Crow. See, one thing is a few players that I admire and know. They say a lot of things about a different people. Feel most limbs like my brother. I love him. You know why? He ain't no hater. That's what he ain't. Not at all. A lot of other guys, they have issues, but Philmo is not a hater. Philmo is my partner. And if he ever need me, I'm there. Yes, you sir. Know, you know, because we didn't do some things don't nobody know about. Right. You know, and we've been real with each other. Yeah, and that's how it's gonna always be. Yeah. You know, forever, you know, it's yeah. people like y'all is like spiritual and, you know, it's just not about the physical. You guys going to reunite whenever, whatever life, whatever but you stay. But you know what? This goes back to all old school. We didn't never hate on each other. We had fun together. Frank, Ted, Willie, Andrew, Philmo, uh, all old schools, Big Curtis, uh, name it all the way back. None of them was haters. They never hate on another player. This is that new way shit, man. And you can't tell them nothing. They buck wild with it. Because they don't got no real game. Yeah. You know, they're getting their money up. Yeah, That's I, how they're getting their women. They got, like, their money. They got cars, houses. I love all my, my player friends, the youngsters. And all. I love them all. They might not love me back, but they ain't going to make me change my mind and not care about them. I come to town, Gangster Brown was doing good. 
Shout out Gangsta Brown. I'm, 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 I'm. We now God brothers, you know, because yeah. uh, Phil Mo he crowned me officially the yeah. second godson, and which I'm. That's how I'm your god, god nephew. You know, for those who I know it's controversy with the blood, yeah. with the DNA, but you know, uh, we, you, my uncle uh, through God. You yeah. know, and he's my father through God. So, and you know, he speaks highly about me. You know, I know this, and uh, we just. Uh, respect. I get out. They had a lot of players that was doing well back then. You know, Charlie Clapp, uh, AP. You know, I mean, these players you had to look up to at the time. You know, and if, if it's not that way now, give them that for what they did. You know what I'm saying? It might not be that way now, but what they did do, they did. So I'm gonna speak on that because. I'm not going to be like these other guys. Oh, man, he ain't doing shit. Look where he at. You know, I'm not going to do that. Uh, Doobie. All these people did well, you know. And uh, what I love about them, the top players that runs them, they respect me for my get down. A lot of them don't because they have their personal issues. Like I say, people don't be mad at the next person. They really be mad at themselves for not keeping up with the pace. Yeah. So I'm not going to speak. Bishop Don Juan, done well. Don't try to take nothing away from this man. This man done well. You, you can see it for yourself. Ain't nobody got to tell you. Look at it. So you, you just can't take that away from a, what didn't happen, you know. Crown the, crown the people, man. If they done it, they done it. If they didn't, they didn't. Yeah, Dino. You know, all these people done well. Uh, they rock steady for years, you know. Things happen in life with the game, man. Ain't nothing promised to us out here. You know, we all doing it from here. We ain't on no job, depend on no check to come in. You know, we had to do it from the brain. And that's just how it went, you know. What's the longest you 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 held a, a woman at one time? Uh probably I don't know, two of them for like 30 some years. Damn. Ten years, you know. Uh, uh, three, four years. Uh, they don't last long nowadays like they used to. Yeah. You know, they was like I said, they be having things on their mind, you know. But I put myself in a position where I ain't got to buy it out. I ain't got to kiss no ass. I know where I'm at in life. I know I'm in a position to step up anytime I get ready. And uh, my mother said, Boy, it's a damn shame for a man or, or to have one hole to crawl in. The wreck got more than that to crawl into. <laughs> now, how's a man only do one thing and feel like he's going to win like that? She educated me on that. So I was, you know, it's a money game. It, it, it's, it's, it's not a game that you just, you got to elevate from just showing off. You got to show them, show out. And that's what I do. You're serious with me. I done had both hotels. At a hotel in Fresno. Wedding chapels in Las Vegas. Uh, several homes, 10, 11 homes. Get out of the from the game. I bought $110,000 home with one bro. One. And a brand new Seville in 1981. Yeah, you don't need a whole bunch of uh, mediocre. Man, you don't count heads, you count money. Yes, sir. You know, and sometimes, it, you know, it's hard for a person to have one. What if you got 10, 11 on your team? You, know, you got to really be sparked. And, uh, they can't even handle one. That's where all this confusion is coming from. You know, the same yeah. one is close to none, though. So, you know, you really got to be on your business. Yeah, they making yeah. all the girls, like, uh, too masculine yeah. and dominant because they're not checking them. Yeah. And they're not telling the girl right from wrong. Yeah. So they just let the girl just do whatever because, you know, I, like, I want to have you tonight for sex. Mm -hmm. So just talk crazy to me or run over me. Mm -hmm. And then they go into society and do it to other men. Yeah. And then the other man that's a stranger got to check them. Hey, don't do this. Don't say this. Yeah. Yeah, you got to program and keep them on the right track, keep respect level in it, you know. And uh, women trying to be so dominant nowadays, you know, and, and then they, they have uh, traits of other men that they've been with. They create yeah. problems in your game, you know, because if you got a broad and one, one, them been with four or five dudes, I've been with a husband. I've been with an ever. Man, you got to go against all, all that, that game that she got in her. You got to go against all that and, and change all that around. You know, yeah. that's, a, that's a job. Because they become habit of what they done had in their past. Yeah. And bring it to the forefront, you know. 
and they do it on purpose. I was just talking to a couple girls the other day, like all the time. They always say that, like, uh, that's where they get their energy. They go, I'm going to get some energy from you and I'm going to get some energy from you. And they even trying to have sex to 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 steal your energy, you know? Yeah, well, they ain't going to tell them what page they be on. Like I say, they don't know. Stop thinking, you know? And it's a hell of a thing for your job to have to be wasted on some bullshit when it's unnecessary because that's what most of it be you know you got a few of them got a little fat upstairs you know but they mix it up with bullshit and they make yourself become good to bad you know what about uh like you knocked a lot of dudes off with you know growing up and just being in the game so long uh you know how did you handle like Cause I know the new era is sucker, so <laughs> you get served. You know it's a sucker. He ain't on your level. So how do you like? It made me not even want to participate in the game when I got uh, moved uh, by somebody who green uh, looks like he's in you know elementary or something in school yeah. playing sports, mm-hmm. and and he really talks like that too. You know, so how do you deal with that? Because I remember that's when I was changing. That's some of the stuff I was going through. Like my women would go over here to this sucker, <laughs> and this sucker, and this sucker. So it frustrated me, bro. Unks. Yeah, I, I knocked the blood up off because at the back at the time when I was copping blow, when I was coming up, you know, you know, you, 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 uh, you move them and keep moving and keep moving them. You know, if the game is loose. You're going to get knocked. That's just how it was back then when I was coming up. And I moved a lot of them because that's how I come up, you know. And when I got older in life, things started changing. So I stopped smashing on dudes that uh, that I knew couldn't take it like that, you know. Because you got to really want to come and want to shoot you and kill you and do all type of things, you know. Because they're not really true to it. When was the yeah. last certified uh, knocking you had? Like you uh, knocked another certified ism like you that i knock somebody yeah it's all the time you know all the time. It, it never stops just you know, when you stop now just to, if i accept it or not yeah I, yeah I, then Ock was telling me you can't he seen you with, with a youngster you know pretty you know you knock something off and you know had her representing you and you know came to one of the shows with a folk you know oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. that's all the time <laughs> i mean i always had a cold knock in i even got a cold knock in now i just don't accept everything to come my way yeah, you know, especially this this age and that I got now. You know, uh, I don't accept. I I only accept women that qualify to be with me. Right, pretty is what pretty do. Cute face and kind words won't feed a canary bird. So I keep it rocking. You know, I I don't either. I'm gonna get paid or I'm gonna get charged. Which way you like it? You know, peas in the pot is still hot with me. How you feel about the disrespect in today's era? I don't like disrespect at all from a man or woman. I don't accept it. And uh, a lot of time that can push you and bring the gold real out of you. You know, and I try to stay away from that because I still got that deep down buried up in me. And I don't want to bring that service it out because action become habits. Right. You know, it's very easy to uh, get back on the page that you used to be on. You know, I try to elevate myself and stay away from all that negativity, you know. That's good advice for us. You being so serious about success, did it strain any close ties or relationships? Like, because I know for me, uh, going to school, going back to school, changing my life, uh, you know, getting on top and what I wanted to do, it made a lot of people like uh, mad at me or not want to be around me. They couldn't understand or something. How did how did you deal with that? Well, I never really had that problem. Only problem I have is that you separate tall timber from little bush. That's the only problem I ever have. And that's what the criticism come in at. That's what a nickname come in at. And that's what accusation come in at. A lot of things come with that when you when you success. It's lonely at the top, you know, because everybody can't deal with that elevation, you know. But I'm gonna keep dealing with it because that's what that's what the air I'm on, you know. I'm trying to climb. That's I mean, never, man. I never had enough that I was satisfied. That's a uh, uh, a thing that I know about myself that's that could hurt. Me. That's some knowledge right there. I've never been satisfied, and I've done better than most people that call themselves in the game. But I've never been satisfied. I'm still climbing the mountain. Man, we need to hear that honestly. Yeah. You have you had any regrets? 
Well, I had a lot of regrets that I still think about today. My biggest regret, I knew what my qualifications has been. I know what it is now, and I know what I should have did that I didn't do. Whatever reason for it, I blocks it out and don't look back, and I look forward. I could have been worth 50 million because I had that kind of access in my life come my way. But being caught up in that fish tank and not being thinking in the ocean waves, you know, I should have been swimming with the uh, megalodon instead of minerals, you know. Then I would have, and I didn't have any patience. Mm -hmm. That's what hurt me in Lowen. So I'll I go over my past to conduct my future. That's how you got so sharp. Yeah. Is it important to leave where you are from to get to the next level? Well, not necessary. It all depends where your mindset is at. Uh, it helped me because I learned to be around more educated people. And I learned more uh, versus being caught up in where I was at. I don't think I've been where I'm at now. So it did help me. But other people sit right there. They stand at one spot. And they went in like that. So it just all depends. For me, it would it, it may work and it may not, but I want to spread my wings. What made you sad through um, one of the major things that happened in your life that made you sad? The major things that happened in my life that hurt me the most is when I got busted in 1992 and I didn't have to have to do nothing for the rest of my life. And I was on the right page. I used to count money for four or five hours at night. Everything was paid for brand new Rolls Royce, Zimmer, Ben, Betts, duty trucks, all type of other cars. I didn't order a dime or nothing and had everything stacked up. A million dollars worth of jewelry, all that. And they come took it. Everything. That one of the saddest things that happened to me in my life. My partner walked up in jail and said, what happened? Man, you was living like a king. Everybody in the country thought nothing could happen to me because all of my life, the police been after me since the 60s and they could never get me. And at that time, they didn't believe it. And I didn't either. God was always looking out. But I knew it was for a reason. What, 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 what made you mad? I was mad at myself for making a mistake. So that made you mad as to? Getting outside of my lane, something I don't usually do. Yeah. And I did it to help somebody else. And I started not to, and I did. And they charged me. So I'm pretty sure that's what made you happy, too, the most happiest? Man, the most happiest when they let me go. And I said, I'm right back at them. And guess what? I'm doing better now than I was then. That's what's up, man. What we about to let him go, man. We need the blueprints for, for you, man. I'm gonna let you speak for about five or ten minutes and just get it all out. The blueprints. Uh, what advice can you give us to trying to follow in your footsteps and be where you're at? I mean, not exactly, but you know, people who's coming from, you know, already doing good, but trying to have that that road of success like you. Well, I advise everybody just because it worked for me, it don't mean it's gonna work for you. You got to put some concrete on whatever you're doing in life. I advise anybody, don't follow my footsteps because it's a gamble with your life. Any way it go. The best thing to do is go to school, get educated, find something that you don't like, you, you don't mind doing that you like doing, stay with it, get your credit straight, take your time, don't be in no rush and leave them streets alone. Only thing in the streets is death or prison. The world has changed so much now that it's not even no understanding with it. You don't even know why it happens like it do. They just say the, uh, the game don't change, but the people do. Uh, everything is changing now. I don't even know what to even uh, try to make it fit. You got to slow yourself down, put solitude in your life. I wouldn't even say get a wife and get married because 
the like that don't work either. You know, following the the person rules in life will used to be get your wife and it's gonna last for the rest of your life. You find movie stars get get uh rich. They both rich. They get married, find the rules, and they break up in a year, and it's all bad. So the best thing to do, like I advise you, go to school, get your education, and round yourself off, get put around, because if everything else leaves, you got yourself. What books or uh movies uh do you have and how can the people get in touch with you, Big Verge Unks? Um, you go to uh Big Virgil Grandmaster for IG, Ray Fairley, R-A-Y-F-A-I-R-L-E-Y -E for Facebook. And look under Tubi TV for the Grandmaster series that's coming soon. We got uh, the books from the inside out, and Death is Not a Game. Uh, the documentary. Uh, my life over the top. Check out the movie, A For Me A Lot and Baby In The Hood. I'm a producer on both of them. And we got a lot more to come. So stay tuned. Keep your eye on the Grandmaster. It's gonna be really exciting. All right, Ox, man, it was good, man. Always good, big dog. Yeah. You gonna leave him with that.